Welcome to Trunk Treasures, Teaching Moments with Izzy Harriet and Company. I'm Ginger Rankin. Today we're going to continue and close out our series on God Speaking Refreshing in 2014. And I don't know if you've been able to catch any of the uh, segments that we have. We have, this will be our seventh. And I had no idea when we started this that we were going to be going still at this time this long on on just this one thing that God spoke to me at the beginning of the year so it has been an in-depth study and I've enjoyed doing it and obeying the Lord to give the word that he spoke to my heart at the beginning of this year and so I hope that if you've been able to watch any of the the videos that you're getting something from the Holy Spirit, something from the Word of God that you're able to take with you uh, throughout your days so far in 2014. And I really and truly believe in what the Lord is saying to us in this Word. So God is speaking refreshing. Today, we're going to finalize, button this up, just like I did my jacket. Um, and I want you to turn with me, if you would, to Deuteronomy chapter 4. And I'll tell you right now that this is how the Lord uh, began to speak to me about this refreshing. I want to read to you um, from some of the scriptures that we've been sharing on refreshing. And yesterday, we shared quite a few. And today I want to go back and share with you the actual Hebrew and Greek definitions of the word refreshing. And they just happened um, to list two of the very scriptures that we did teach on. So we're going to look at, at the one in um, Isaiah 28. And we talked much about Isaiah 28 yesterday. And this was where... Um, a word came, a prophetic word. And so that was the way of refreshing. It was for repentance. So here we see that the Hebrew definition is to, this is so, so wonderful. I love the Greek and the Hebrew and just digging in and getting the deeper, uh, richer meaning, the truer meaning of what God was really saying in his word. So, Refreshing in the Hebrew is to divide, to divide. You have to think on some of these, and they do make sense once you take a minute to meditate on them. To divide a suddenly, a broken. You know, when we're uh, getting to the place, and we talked about this a little bit yesterday, where you feel like something's broken, something's missing. And you know that our peace, shalom, our salvation, all of the Greek and Hebrew definitions of that word are nothing missing, nothing broken, everything together in the right order to benefit our lives in the way that God originally planned and intended. So all things working together unto our good. So divide a suddenly. Sometimes uh, it's a suddenly, isn't it, that God has to come and tell us, you need a refreshing. Just like Jesus in Revelation where he came and said, you know what, I have this against you. We talked about this yesterday. Um, correct this now. We need a suddenly here. We need a change. We need to divide Things. We need to go through and sift and sort to bring about that refreshing that God needs to see in our lives. Um, it's ease. It's, it's um, a moment. Yes, there comes a moment. And sometimes um, we have to get a little bit uncomfortable before we realize that that we need to come back to that place of ease, E-A-S-E. -E. To act 
in an instant. Yeah, sometimes we just have to do it. It's a momentary thing. Sometimes it's just a quick adjustment, right? It's a quick thing that can bring us the refreshing that God desires us to have. To stir up, and we talked much about that. Um, to disturb. <clears throat> and yes, sometimes we do have to uh, disturb our routine. Change it up, like we've already said in order that we get out of that place where God sees that, oh, you know, this, things are just not quite the way they need to be. To make a twinkling, I like that, to make a twinkling. In the twinkling of an eye, you know, you can get refreshed if you obey God. And remember, I, I thought that was so good yesterday that we have to be careful that God chooses our refreshing. God chooses the avenues that we need for refreshing because there are different types of refreshing and different things that bring about refreshing and not every opportunity to be refreshed is one that God would have us to partake of. So we really have to seek him on that. Repose. I love that. Repose. You've got to... To take the pose that you're in or the posture that you're in at the present time and God is going to, you know, switch it around a little bit and change it up, like we've already said, and put you in a reposed place. That will be a better thing. To be at rest or to repose, to settle. So he'll shake you up, shake things up, and then settle you down in a new thing. Amen? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, quiet, refreshing, quiet. You know, oh, I love this one because our home, <laughs> we have people here who, you know, everybody's got their own thing going on uh, ministry-wise, things that they're busy about doing, um, things that they believe God has uh, placed in their lives with gifts and talents and so on and so on and so around here I was just thinking before I came to do this video around here it's quite funny because we have numerous pairs of uh, earbuds uh, plugs for iPads you know our iPhones and just plug 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 and uh, <laughs> You know, one person's trying to record music. Another person is trying to, uh, you know, work on something else. And so a lot of times, man, I'm telling you, we resort to those, to those plugs. And sometimes, I tell you, I just find it so necessary to just get out of being around all of that get to a place where I can have quiet, just me by myself, whether it's in the shower or whether it's on the floor in the night, whether it's on the floor in the morning, uh, wherever it's at that you can get an alone time, that quiet time, because as I thought yesterday, Lord, I need to hear your voice. And we have to repose and reposition, reposture ourselves. We choose that, don't we? Every day, we have to choose to put ourselves in a frame of mind where we don't let the world and all the voices in the world come in and dictate and, and just clutter up our brain. You know, clutter up our spirit so that we can't hear the voice of God anymore because there's nothing more vital to our lives as people of God than that we be able to hear his voice. So that's part of a refreshing too. Give rest. Give rest. Oh my. Thank God. You know, you have you ever just really stopped and thought about the fact that God gives us the night time for for rest, sleep to repose ourselves? And to recompose ourselves because I'll tell you what, 
sometimes can you imagine what we would be like if we didn't have that sleep and rest time and i know a lot of people sleep but they don't rest and i'll tell you there's a difference between uh sleeping and waking up rested and recompose as compared to sleeping and waking up feeling like you haven't slept in two weeks you know uh we have to take care of ourselves people we got to take care of our spirits we got to take care of our body our mind or all of it you know take care take care take care okay so those were the hebrew definitions of the word refreshing out of that isaiah 28 that we read together yesterday where it spoke about that prophetic word bringing wanting to bring the refreshing to people but they resisted god's instructions they wouldn't repent they wouldn't change they wouldn't repose and recompose themselves so how sad sometimes we forfeit uh, and probably you know what probably more times than not with every christian but i would say that with many many christians you know, they forfeit what God, the refreshing God would have for their lives because we're simply just on a fast pace, move, 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 move. And a lot of times, you know, it's sad to say, but God comes just about last on the list of all the to-do lists. You can't live successfully you won't walk in the greatest glory that god has for you if that's how you're going to live your spiritual life and we're going to get to something that will describe that to us here oh my goodness it's so rich and powerful i can't wait to share it with you so now we're going to go to that acts uh the times of repentance and refreshing and look at the Greek definition now. Look at the difference between the two. It's very interesting here. It says here, um, a cooling, which I, I loved it because, you know, the other day after I did, did one of these segments and I was walking through my bedroom and I just heard the Lord remind me of Adam walking with God in the cool of the day. And I wanted to come out and look that up in the Hebrew, and I didn't get that done. But it, that refreshing just reminded me, well, God, I'll bet that's why you said Adam walked with you in the cool of the day. And it was just that time of refreshing. And you know what? I was right. Because here it says, um, and this is in Acts in the New Testament. So how awesome is that? Because it's a reviving of something that, that Adam had with God in the very beginning before he fell. So the definition, the Greek definition, is a cooling, a refreshing, to cool again, to cool again, to cool off. You know, sometimes we've got to strip things off, like we said yesterday, to recover from effects of the heat. Now, you know, that that is just, well, I don't, it, you know, self-explanatory. To recover from the effects of the heat. You ever go through your Christian walk and you just, you know, after a time, you're just, I mean, even when you have your, your daily time and your quiet time and so on and so on, but the pressures of life Oh my goodness, and that goes right back to all the different kinds of ground that the seed, the Word of God, can fall into, which is our heart. All the different type of soil there. Um, you know, we, we recover from effects of the heat, but all of those uh, cares of the world and all of that, they so distract us and wears down after a while and if we're not careful on a day-to-day -day basis um which i believe this is exactly what god knows has happened to many of his people even people in ministry i'm telling you uh we go to victory christian center and as many of you know um that was headed up by billy joe doherty who passed away a few years ago and his wife has had the ministry with the children now for uh, since his passing. 
And I loved it because I went to a meeting and the the youngest son is doing most of the, the preaching now. And they had the word explosion uh, like they have every year. It's an annual thing and they have all these wonderful guest speakers come in. But I loved it that Paul got up on the last day of meetings and they had cut short um, I believe they cut short the number of meetings that they normally had and um, the the time frame and there were things that they had kind of cut down on and he got up and explained that man the weight Remember Paul said that in the scriptures, the weight of the churches on top of this and that and the other and the other and the other. You know, I'm being beaten, I'm stoned, I blah, 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 blah. You know? <laughs> and he said, on top of that, I have the care of all the churches. <laughs> oh, you don't care for a church without a whole lot of weight that comes with that. It's a weight that God has to bring times of refreshing because if not, you'd just be ready every other day to throw in the towel. No, there just are times when you've got to have that cooling off from the heat. Uh, those cares of the world, the pressures that would cause you to completely lose sight of the power, the glory, the wondrous things that are in God. It just gets to be um, treacherous and that is not God's will in the Old Testament he says he wants us to serve him with joyfulness and gladness of heart those are the exact words so it's important that we really listen to this message that God gave for this year for his people so I believe there's a lot of people out there who need this they need to have a refreshing and God is calling us to that so listen up <laughs> amen listen up to the word of the Lord and get the advantage of it I mean get the benefit get the blessing because God wants to take us God needs for his people to be refreshed as we sort of touched on just a bit yesterday um, to be refreshed for this next part of the journey just like Elijah Elijah when he after the the battle of the gods at, at Mount Carmel and and the angel came and baked a cake for him up in that cave that he had run to and God told him you're gonna need this you're gonna need this new strength you gotta repose reposition <laughs> get new composure get this get this cooling off get this refreshing in you so that you can make it through the next part of your journey so recover from effects of heat to refresh one's spirit, to recover breath. Oh, you know, in the world today, we hear so many people just, you know, put out slogans all the time that say, you know, just breathe. Breathe in, inhale, exhale. Why? Because things just get so cumbersome after a while. And, and you know what? And that's Hebrews 12.1. You know, let us run this race and put off those things, uh, those weights that so easily beset us, weights and sin. So to recover our breath, oh, I love it. And you know, now you have to remember that this is taking place in Acts. And so the breath of what? The breath of the Holy Spirit that Jesus breathed into the disciples in that upper room experience on the day of Pentecost. Take a breath. Take another breath. Holy Spirit, be alive in me. Be new and fresh in me at all times. Don't let me get in your way, Lord. Don't let me allow my life to get cobbled up with cares of this world and all of that whatever it is distractions temptations you know this 
this is an hour of great temptation. If you don't think so, I'm here to tell you that this day and hour is one of great tem temptation. And God wants to keep us to do everything in his arsenal. <laughs> Amen. Um, and he is equipped. He said we are complete in him. Everything we need uh, for life and godliness in him has already been given to us. We lack no good thing. Come on. So if we're not in that posture today, we need to go to God. Holy Spirit, breathe fresh upon me. Amen. Every day, every day, even sometimes moment by moment. So to refresh one's spirit, to recover breath, to take in air, to cool off, to revive, turn on the air conditioner. If you're, you know, it's, it's 112, turn on the air conditioner. If you have one, you have, that's a blessing, man. I so often think of people, how spoiled we are and how many people don't have the luxuries that we have in this nation that we can sit down and cool off under an air conditioner. Man, I'll tell you what. We are so blessed and we don't even know it. Okay. Uh, I love this though because a lot of the words here in in Acts for refreshing are those that relate to the Holy Spirit's ministry that was given in Acts chapter 2. So to breathe, to revive, uh, to take the air cool, uh, to cool by blowing, uh, to be made or to grow cool or cold, we don't, you know, that's a good or a bad thing. We need to uh, cool off refreshing way but we don't want our love to wane wax cool grow cold and that is mentioned here as well so those are the greek and hebrew definitions for the word refreshing and i wanted to just touch on those look how in depth that is i love it i love it so now i want to go to deuteronomy chapter four and this is the story of moses when God has just spoken to him and told him, do you know all the wondrous works that God did with Moses? Oh my goodness, the, the monumental moment, the, the course, the history of mankind changed with Moses up on Mount Sinai when he received the Ten Commandments and all of the laws, um, the pattern for the temple, the pattern for the priesthood, so on and so on. Oh my goodness, Moses just, it was so powerful. But here he is, and there, God has just told him, you know, Moses, you're not going into the promised land. He came and led the people of Israel out and brought them, uh, you know, they brought them out of Egypt, and they're going through the wilderness, and they... They were disobedient, and so they didn't get to go in when they should have or could have. So here Moses had to endure all that time in the wilderness with them, wandering around and around, going around the same mountain like we like to say, and um, to have the experience that Moses had with all of this, all of this that God did, with him, for him, on behalf of all the people to be a part of that. Wow. I mean, wow. That is a lot to have in your trunk, right? Those treasures that are in, in that earthen vessel hidden in your spirit, man. You're, you, he was storing up for heavenly things and not things of the earth. What a thing he had been through with God. Now he can't go into that promised land. And I want to start at chapter 4, verse 1. And I want to read to you the scriptures that God actually pointed out to me that began this, this message for refreshing his people in this year. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you. This is Moses speaking to all the people that he's gathered together 
because he's 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 telling them that he's not going in with them they're gonna go on with Joshua now and so there has to be I believe that what Moses was doing here all the words that you're about to hear him speak to to the people of Israel those words acted as a refreshing a refreshing to the people for what purpose to prepare them once again for the new part of their journey the next part of the journey God is so good so let's hear what Moses has to say to the children of Israel therefore hearken O Israel unto the statutes and judgments which I teach you for to do them that you may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers has given to you you shall not add unto the word which I command you and neither shall you diminish aught from it that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you and he goes on and he talks about uh, well we'll just read it your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor for all the men that followed Baal Peor the, the Lord God hath destroyed them from among you now listen to this these are the words that God pointed out that we need to hear today we need to take these and meditate on them and just hear what Moses was saying to those people in that day. He says, but you did cleave unto the Lord your God. Circle this. It's verse 4 of chapter 4 of Deuteronomy. But you that did cleave unto the Lord your God, you are alive, every one, unto this day. And I am telling you that from my experience in 2004 with the Lord, that shut-in year where he revealed the perils that are coming on the face of the earth and I see them happening around me every day fulfillment every single day and I am telling you we need this word in the future we need this word today there are people right now even as I speak who desperately need this word from God God is saying to us that no matter what happens if we will cleave unto him we will be alive every one unto that day you that did cleave to the Lord your God are alive every one of you to this day Wow grab that circle that date it because this is from God at this very time that we're speaking together now I want to skip down to, um, he, he talks about do all the commandments, do what I shared with you, do what God said to do so that when you get into this land, um, you're going to prosper. If you obey God, you will prosper where you go to possess it. Verse 6 says, keep therefore and do these. Um, and I want to hit this last part of verse 5. Verse 6, it says, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people now here again see how this applies to our day today surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people for what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for who, what other nation has a God like this, he's saying? And what nation, verse 8, is there so great that has statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? Look at that. I mean, look how the honor is there, the reverence is there, the thankfulness is there for the word of God through Moses and trying to get the children of Israel to listen to take serious heed unto this word because it's the very thing that's going to carry them through the days that are to come and to cause them to be able to inherit that land flowing with milk and honey and to remain in it and not to lose it okay so um let's go down unto and he tells the next verse 9 he tells them to teach these to their children 
um, to their sons and their sons' sons. Now look at verse 10. Especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. He says, You came near and stood under the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire. Oh, get these words. The mountain burned with fire. This is Moses who was there. These are people who were there actually experiencing all of this. You got to, you, you were at the mountain that burned with fire under the midst of heaven with darkness, clouds, and thick darkness. And the Lord spoke unto you out of the midst of the fire. You heard the voice of the words, but you saw no similitude, only you heard a voice. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even ten commandments. And he wrote them upon two tables of stone. Can you hear Moses? Can you just hear Moses speaking these words? And what a solemn and powerful uh, salutation this was coming from his heart and the Spirit of God. And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you the statutes and judgments that you might do them in the land, whether you go over to possess it. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for you saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb, lest you corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image. And he goes on there about that. But now look at verse 20. But the Lord has taken you, and he brought you forth out of an iron furnace, even out of Egypt, to be unto him a people of inheritance as you are in this day. God wants us. God wants us to be shining like stars in the firmament today, in this day. He wants us, he wants everybody around us to be able to see that we are a people of inheritance, even unto this day when things are so trying for most people, okay? People are looking for help all over the place, and don't tell me they're not, because they are. Um, we're watching the Middle East. We're watching things that are happening to the nations right now. We're watching things that are happening uh, to our nation. Things that are, you know, the godly things on the whole global scale are being eroded. And even, in, you know, what would appear that there's a huge collapse um, in the values of God on the face of the earth as we have not seen since the days of Jesus' ministry on earth and like the days of Noah. But the Lord has taken you and brought you forth out of an iron furnace, out of Egypt. He's brought us out of sin, delivered us. We are out of darkness. We're in the light now. And and God is saying, get these scriptures, grab hold, and stir yourself up with them every day. Or at least once a week, maybe, you know? Okay, so now um, go ahead and let's skip over to verse 22. I must die in this land. Oh, can you imagine that? After all those years. I must die in this land. I must not go over Jordan, but you shall go over and possess that good land. Take heed to yourselves then, and he goes on, don't make for yourself any graven image or don't do the things that you know. Don't involve yourselves with other gods, but serve the true and living God in the way that he's called you to. Stay refreshed in that, right? Verse 24, For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. 
Okay, now we're going to skip down, and you can read the portions that I don't share today. You read them. You read them, and you meditate on them, because God has asked us to. This is a prophetic word, and God has asked us to focus on this chapter and these verses that we're looking at today. So take the time. If you believe it, take the time, and you'll receive what God intends you to receive from it. Let's go to verse 32 because it says here, For ask now of the days that are past, which were before thee since the day that God created man upon the earth, and ask from the one side of heaven even unto the other, whether there has been any such thing as this great thing is or has been heard like it. Oh my goodness! What a great thing that Moses, you see, Moses knew that they were in a monumental time. Moses knew, Moses understood the, the seasons of God. He understood, and he at least understood his part. You know, he at least understood the magnificence of the very work that God had done in the lives of the children of Israel, and he was the mediator at that time. Oh, how glorious, how powerful. Did ever people hear the voice of God speaking out of the midst of the fire as you have heard it and lived? Or has God essayed to go and take him a nation from the midst of another nation by temptation, by signs, by wonders, by war? by a mighty hand, by an outstretched arm, and by great terrors, according to all that the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your eyes. Now remember here, this just came to me. As we're reading this, God delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt, out of slavery, out of bondage, and we have been delivered by, the, by our faith, our life in Christ. But I am telling you, there's coming a day soon. There is coming a day soon for believers. Prepare yourselves because there's coming yet a mighty deliverance for us out of a world that is going to turn absolutely crazy, violent, dark in a way that it has never been before. And God is going to deliver his own out. Amen. We're going to be saved. Oh my goodness, this is so powerful. Or has God saved to go and take him a nation and, do, and bring them out? Now let, let's look at 35 is where we're going to be. Unto thee it was showed that thou mightest know that the Lord he is God and there is none else beside him. Out of heaven, he may be to hear his voice. He, he just continues to bring back to their remembrance all the powerful things that they experienced. Out of heaven, he may be to hear his voice that he might instruct you. And upon earth, he showed you his great fire. And you heard his great words out of the midst of that fire. And because he loved thy fathers, therefore... He chose their seed after them, and he brought thee out in his sight with his mighty power out of Egypt because the fathers died in the wilderness. They didn't get to go in to the promised land because they were disobedient. To drive out nations from before thee greater and mightier than thou art, and to bring thee in, to give thee their land for an inheritance as it is this day. Know therefore this day and consider it, consider it in your heart oh, that the Lord, he is God in heaven above and upon the earth beneath. There is none else. Consider that. Consider so many things in this day too, people. Consider, consider, consider so that you stay in that refreshed posture before God. Now, Let's jump down to chapter 5. 
And again, as I said, you, you read the scriptures that we don't read together because they're just as important. But I wanted to share the ones that he pointed out to me. So chapter 5, verse 1, And Moses called all Israel and said unto them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and judgments which I speak in your ears this day, that you can learn them, keep them, and do them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb. The Lord our God made this covenant with our fathers. Uh, not with, the Lord made not, excuse me, this covenant with our fathers, but with us, even us, who are all of us here alive this day. The Lord talked with you face to face. Oh, the Lord talked with you face to face in the mount of the midst of fire. I stood between the Lord and you at that time to show you the word of the Lord. For you were afraid by reason of the fire and went not up into the mount, saying, I am the Lord thy God. And then he poured out the Ten Commandments. And so the next verses are those Ten Commandments. Let's skip down then to verse 22. These words the Lord spake unto all your assembly in the mount of the midst of the fire. See all these signs and wonders he keeps referring back to. These words the Lord spake unto all your assembly in the mount of the midst of the fire, of the cloud, of the thick darkness, with a great voice. And let me just say, another pivotal, monumental moment in the history of mankind is coming. Is it coming soon? Well, the signs would say so. Uh, and again, one of the prophetic songs that I received on the weekend of the Wall Street fallout was about signs. There are signs in the skies. Signs. There are signs in the skies. It's such a powerful prophetic song. So he says... Uh, so signs are going to be a big part. Signs in the skies are going to be a big part. All kinds of signs, you guys. Matthew 24, come on. Remember the scriptures. Stir yourself up in those things that you once knew as the truth of the word of God. And, and oh, wow, I didn't realize this till just now. We need a refreshing in those words of God. We've been in the prosperity message, and we needed that to fund the gospel that's going into all nations right now. I've shared this with you so many times. But we need a re thank you, Lord. We need a refreshing of those signs that will present themselves at the end of the end times so that we can recognize the day and the hour and we'll be prepared and we'll be busy about doing what God's agenda is in this day. That whatever his heart is in this day, whatever his instructions are for this specific day and hour, we're going to be there. We're going to be there. We're going to be ready. We're going to be refreshed, reposed, recomposed, ready to carry out the powerful mandate, the powerful mantle that is being placed upon the shoulders of this generation to carry that gospel into all nations, Matthew 24, 14. And by the technology that God foretold about in Daniel chapter 12. Oh my goodness. So it came to pass when you heard the voice out of the midst of the darkness, uh, the thick darkness, a great voice. And he says, it came out when you heard the voice of the midst of the darkness for the mountain did burn with fire that you came near unto me, even the heads of your tribes and your elders. And this is important today, too. Elders, come on, we got to wake up. We've got to get in sync with God and with his word and what's really happening in this day and hour. And you said, Behold, the Lord our God has showed us his glory and his greatness. And we've heard his voice out of the midst of the fire. We've seen this day that God does walk with man and man liveth. Now therefore, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us if we hear the voice of the Lord our God anymore, then we'll die, they said at that time back then. Who is there, Moses says, of all flesh 
They actually heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the midst of a fire as we have and lived to tell about it. Oh, <laughs> do you understand that he's stirring them up in things they already know? He's calling them to refresh themselves in this knowledge and understanding so that they can make it through the next part of their journey. Same applies today. Oh, this is so powerful. Go thou near and hear all that the Lord our God shall say, and speak thou unto us all that the Lord our God shall speak unto thee, and we will hear it and do it. This is the elders saying this back then. And the Lord heard the voice of your words when you spake unto me. And the Lord said unto me, I have heard the voice of the words of this people which they spoke unto thee. They have well said all that they have spoken. Oh, that there were such a heart in them that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always, always, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Okay, now, you know, when you go through this on your own, and if you will circle those, and I can go back through, let's uh, just do that really quick because I want to tell you the exact scriptures. We've read them. But I want you to go through and in faith circle these in your Bible with me. Uh, Deuteronomy 4, verses 1, 2, 4, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, verse 5, verse 6, verse 20 and 21, verse 22, verse 24, um, verse 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, chapter 5, verse 1 through 5, um, and chapter 5, verse 22 through verse 29. Okay, and then in chapter 6 he says now there these are the commandments and the statutes obey them so you can possess the land that you might fear the Lord your God to keep all the statutes but look at verse 3 here therefore O Israel observe to do it that it may be well with thee that you might increase mightily as the Lord God of thy fathers has promised thee in the land that flows with milk and honey Hear, O Israel, for the Lord our God is one God, and thou shalt love the Lord God with all your heart, all your soul, and with all your might. And I'm telling you, this is exactly where we're going to have to be in this day. If we're going to do what we started out with in chapter 4, where Moses said in verse 4, you that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive, every one of you, to this day. Do you see how important this refreshing is? Oh, it's so important. And I don't want to add a lot to this today. But I want to finish here because I just want the word that the Lord gave to have the impact upon you. Go meditate. Father, we lift this word to you. We thank you for it. We give you praise, O oh God, that you do have prophetic words for your people still in this day today. Father, the fivefold ministry includes the prophet. And so, Lord, I thank you that you still speak prophetically to your people. No prophecy will ever disagree with what your word has already spoken and what those prophecies still unfulfilled there have to say i thank you for this beautiful 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 to me lord god uh series that we have just finished with you lord god now do the work let this word go forth and accomplish that which it was sent to do in those that hear it father i pray that people will spread this word 
Let other people get the benefit of it too. Let them get the equipping and the arming, the preparation of it for the next part of our journey. Lord, for those today who don't know you, Father, again, your word says in Romans 10, 8, 9, and 10, the word is nigh you even in your mouth, that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. Do it today. Do it today. You don't want to waste another day not being a part of the kingdom of God. As you heard us read here, look at our God. This is our God. And our God still does wondrous things today. And most importantly, he wants, a, he wants people to be prepared for what is about to come upon the face of the earth. He wants us to have uh, his provision over our lives. He wants us to have knowledge of the day so that we can be protected. We don't have to be in fear because the Bible says that men's hearts are going to fail them for fear of things that are coming upon the earth. And I've been walking with the Lord a lot of years, but I can honestly tell you that I have to get refreshings in me continually in this day at things that are taking place upon the earth that I don't get into that spirit of fear and lose my footing on faith. You have to fight that good fight every day in the face of adversity, in the face of threats by our economy, by natural disasters, uh, by political changes on the global scene. I'm telling you, there's so much going on in this day. So do what the word, the prophetic word says. God is speaking a refreshing to his people. Go share that with everybody that you can and, and bring people to the kingdom of God today because that's where God's heart is. I love you. I bless you. And I'm looking forward to the next session of Trunk Treasures with you. I hope you join me and I'll see you then.